My name is Rose Joshua, and I am president of the Chicago Southside NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Thank you all for coming today. This is a very important day. We want you to come to listen to what the candidates have to say, and we're going to give you an opportunity to ask the candidates questions yourself. With no further ado, our moderator for today is Shinta Strasberg. Thank you very much, Rose Joshua. And good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the NAACP Chicago Southside Branch, the SEIU Local Number 73, Cal, the Educational Village Keepers, Blacks and Green, known as BIG, we welcome you to the Adam Clayton Power Academy. This is the first of four candidate forums being held to provide you, the voters, across the south side of Chicago, an opportunity to meet and question both automatic and mayoral candidates. In just 45 days, voters will head to the polls to decide who will be mayor and who will be alderman, who will be retained and who will be booted out. The results literally lie in your hands. These forums are designed to help you make an educated choice come Tuesday, February the 24th, 2015. These forums are calls to action and it is being presented during a very historic time, Dr. Martin Luther King's 86th birthday and the opening of Selma, a chronology of the civil rights movement and the very reason why you are here today. Feel free during this time of instruction and introduction to serve yourself from the light refreshments that have been provided to you at the back of the room. Please reframe from walking and other activities that might be disruptive after the candidates begin their opening statements. Bathrooms are located on this floor down the hall to your right. Uh, today, candidates are from the 10th, 5th, 8th, and 7th wards. And they will present to you their pos positions on several areas of city government that will affect the quality of life of you and your families. So get ready by opening your hearts and minds to discern the merits of the presentations you will hear today to help you formulate your voting decision. All of us play a part in making this forum successful. So please, if you have something that rings, dings, flashes, or crashes, cut it off now or put it, in, uh, put it on vibrate. Also, please hold all applause until the end of the forum. There are many here who favor one candidate, and if we applaud as they speak, we will have less time for questions to be answered. At the end of each session, you will be given an opportunity to give your candidate of choice a rousing round of applause. Now, for the rules of this forum that will provide each candidate an equal opportunity to present their positions to you, the voters, candidates will have each have two minutes for their opening statement, one minute to respond to each question, and two minutes to present their closing statements. Our timekeeper, where is our timekeeper? Okay, she's got the blue blouse on, okay? We'll keep track of the time. For opening and closing statements, a yellow warning card will be raised at the one minute 30 second level to remind the candidate to wrap it up. For all questions, the yellow warning card will be raised at 30 seconds for candidates to wrap it up. Red cards will be raised to let them know that their time has ended. For those uh, who will not stop to keep it fair, I'll simply end their presentation. So don't let me do that, okay? Be, uh, because time will not prevent us to cover all the areas of this forum, a copy of the candidate's responses to a game changer questionnaire has been made available to you. Perhaps many of the questions you would like answered were addressed in the questionnaire. However, pages will pass out and collect postcards to get your questions for the candidates. And those are the questions that uh, I will read and uh, they will be answered. So let's see here. Uh, please word all questions in a general way so all candidates can respond to them. Question screeners have been assigned to determine if questions from the audience have already been addressed in the candidate's questionnaire or are outside the authority and duties of the offices the candidates are seeking. So try to keep your questions uh, pertaining to automatic issues uh, of these, um, these wards, okay? The candidates are seated in alphabetical order and have drawn a number to determine their order for opening statements. The order is reversed for closing statements. 
and I will determine a uh, random but fair and structured framework for questions to be, uh, to be asked. And one more thing, I just want to remind all of you about uh, early voting uh, for the February 24th municipal elections. That is going to be Monday, February 9th through Saturday, February 21st. All 51 early voting sites will be open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sunday hours will be offered at five regional si sites. So I urge you to just Google Chicago Board of Election, and it's right on the front page, so you'll have all of the information. So can we begin with our first candidate? Our first candidate? And please give your name and your title. Sure. Richard Martinez, 10th Ward Aldermanic candidate. I'm running and want to serve as Alderman of the 10th Ward because I want to ensure that all 50,000 people in seven neighborhoods have a voice and say in city government. I will work to ensure that we have an advocate, representative, and ambassador who will fight for and represent the 10th Ward family's interests and agenda. As a husband and father of five children we were raising on the southeast side, I am extremely concerned about the direction and future of this ward. The lack of police and increase in crime, a lack of good paying jobs, a lack of educational opportunities, a lack of places to eat and shop and other recreational opportunities. Many good families have already left the southeast side. And with the help of you and your family's vote, I want to turn the 10th ward around and create a greater hope and a greater future for our children and grandchildren. I believe that my 20 years of government experience, including actual experience in the Chicago City Council and the Illinois State Legislature, I know how to run an aldermanic office the right way, and monitoring over a half a billion dollars in government construction contracts for compliance for the Water Reclamation District's diversity section. I'm not afraid of large dollars or large projects. I believe that this experience has uniquely positioned me to serve, lead, and guide this ward properly. In addition, for the last 20 years, I have served and fought for the families in the 10th Ward. I have served as a Capsby facilitator, local school council member at Washington High School, president of Southeast Lions Club, and have invested in and mentored over 200 young men on the southeast side. Working with the community, I've helped to lead the fight against the polluting Lucadia coal gasification plant. Out of that victory, we created the Environmental Justice Alliance of Greater Southeast Chicago, and out of that, I helped to co-author the Environmental Justice Principles for all future development on the southeast side. I've also worked to ban pet coke, including gathering over a thousand signatures to put a referendum on the ballot for the February 24th election to give 10th Warders a say to ban pet coke in the 10th Ward. I thank you for your invitation and your consideration, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, the, second, um, the second one, please. Good evening, everyone. I want to begin by thanking all the organizers tonight. Your for putting name. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Juan. We said Alderman candidate for 10th Ward. So I want to begin by thanking everyone who put this uh, event here to tonight. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out in the audience and, of course, the candidates to my left and to my right. I'm a lifelong resident of the 10th Ward. I was born in the South Chicago neighborhood. I attended the schools uh, here in Sullivan and then OOG. Uh, I'm a St. Francis de Sales graduate. I hold a finance degree from Roosevelt University. I was the first in my family to go on to college. I have 10 plus years in corporate accounting, uh, which proves to be my strong suit um, in this election. So I do know what it takes to revitalize a neighborhood. I know what tools you know, are in my toolbox to re revitalize a neighborhood. Um, I've held many uh, annual coal drives and toy drives throughout the, 10th, throughout the 10th Ward to provide for the families. Uh, ad hoc projects I've held, um, Fundraisers, one specific that comes to mind is uh, Saving Immaculate Conception uh, Grammar School, uh, one school that was in danger of failing. Um, also a member of the MPC, which is the Mexican Patriotic Club. They are the oldest organization, Mexican organization in the Midwest. And currently I'm the Eastside Little League president. It's a youth organization housing over 400 uh, kids. Um, also I am bilingual, which I feel is very crucial in the 10th Ward, considering how diverse it is. If you, if you walk the street to the 10th Ward, you will notice that from the northern end to the south, southern end, it's, it's very diverse. We have every, every color and race. And last, with a little closing statement, I just want to say that I do want to make the 10th Ward proud and for the rest of the Chicago to know who we are. Thank you.
All right, and the third one pulled. Your, your name again. Juan Wiesard. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Sue Sidlowski Garza, and I'm running for alderman in the 10th Ward. I have been a lifelong resident for, of the 10th Ward. Uh, my family has been in, that, in this ward for 140 years. For almost 20 years, I have worked for Chicago Public Schools. Currently, I'm a counselor at the Jane Addams Elementary School. I started out as a lunch lady and as a student advocate. I realized the importance of education, and I kept going back to school while I worked. Um, I currently serve as area vice president for the Chicago Teachers Union. I'm in charge of 69 schools, and every school within the 10th Ward is encompassed in that area. <coughs> Sorry. For the past 15 years, I have served as a program director for the Hegwish Community Committee that has brought numerous programs to youth and children at risk to the ward. Kids from, over, from almost every school in this ward have benefited from my programs. I'm running for alderman because I care deeply about the children and the families of our ward. Some of the finest people I know have come from the 10th Ward. And whether you got your education from the Ch University of Chicago or from an education from the blast furnace at U.S. Steel, we know we're not getting a fair shake down here. We know we deserve better. We deserve to live in a clean environment without toxins in our air and our water. The north side doesn't have pet coke. The north side doesn't have agrifying. I call this environmental racism. I support a complete ban on pet coke. We deserve to have programs and recreational activities for our youth and seniors. We deserve to know where our TIF money is and where our alderman's budget is spent. We deserve to have an elected school board and we deserve to have fully funded schools regardless of your zip code. I have stood up against corporations and millionaires that have tried to balance the city's budget on the backs of the working families. Our children and seniors deserve better. And the people, they're cutting programs and trying to steal our pensions, and I will fight to implement the LaSalle Street tax. I just got going. Okay. All right, and our last candidate. Thank you. My name is Olga Bautista. I'm a candidate for 10th Ward Alderman. Thank you to the NAACP for inviting me. And I just want to start off by saying, um, that I am deeply troubled and disgusted by the bombing that just happened in Colorado at the NAACP office. It's another uh, reminder that we have a long way to go to be able to protect ourselves and the black and brown community. I think this is an opportunity for us to unite. So um, in saying that, I have dedicated my professional career and efforts to improving the lives of our community members. I was a local school council parent rep at John L. Marsh Elementary School a YMCA, a YWCA crisis intervention specialist, a board member for the Immigrant Defense Alliance, a founding member for the Southeast Coalition for Immigrant Rights, and a member of the Southeast Environmental Task Force. I'm also a founding member of the Coalition to Ban Pet Coke and a member of the, cau the Caucus of Rank and File Educators. I'm trained in restorative justice, conflict resolution, DIY balloon mapping, and I was nominated to present the balloon mapping project for the White House Makers Fair. I've also previously worked as a state recruiter for the Illinois Migrant Education Program, where I honed my skills at responding to the needs of diverse communities. I have a deep commitment to the future of the 10th Ward. My vision is to create a safe and healthy environment for the children in the community and to demand a revitalization plan that will bring sustainable jobs to the community. I will bring a strong voice for the people of the 10th Ward and will ensure that the voice of the people is heard loudly in City Hall and beyond. As one of the lead organizers for the Southeast Side Coalition to Ban Pet Coke, I have fought the fight that four state and local politicians, including Attorney General Lisa Madigan's office, the City Council and the Governor's office, to address the pressing, pressing environmental issues in the 10th Ward. Frontline communities are often left out of the important decisions when it affects them the most. It doesn't have to happen this time around. I will continue to use my community organizing skills to bring the people of the 10th Ward together. Wow, okay. <laughs> I am so glad I don't live in the 10th Ward. You all have very excellent candidates, and it's going to be a hard choice. Okay, we're going to go to the panel uh, panelists right now. Uh, our panelists are Ray Bowman and Bimel Terry, uh, Rosita Chatonda, and Jennifer Edwards. Um, the first question is going to be from Ray Bowman. 
And that's going to be on TIFFs. Do you have a question on TIFFs? Uh, you don't have a mic. Okay. Hold on a second. Sorry. Sorry. We're going to start. Could you state your name? I'm Jennifer Edwards. We're going to start from this end. Um, okay. Can you speak up? Yeah. We're, can you hear me now? Can everybody hear? Okay, the questions are uh, under certain categories, and we're going to start with revenue and taxes. Okay, the first question. He can't hear you. You still can't hear? Can you hear now? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, the, first, the questions are under categories, and we're going to start with revenue and taxes. Okay. Um, the first question goes to... Let us know. Which candidate, please? Mr. Martinez, okay. Okay, the first question goes to uh, Mr. Martinez. Yes. Okay, it's concerning TIFs, mm -hmm. tax, increment financing. Tax increment financing has diverted taxpayer funds for public services like schools, parks, and public safety to private sector economic development, both in the city center to a lesser extent to, to promote economic development in blighted neighborhoods. What do you think of tax increment financing, and how would you fund both economic development and essential public services? What's the time? What's the time that I have to answer the question? One minute. Oh boy. One minute. So the answer to Rich Martinez, 10th Ward Aldermanic candidate, to answer your question with regards to uh, tax increment financing, uh, there has to be a greater level of accountability and transparency. Most people in most wards don't know how many TIF districts they have or how much, how much funding is in those TIF districts and what they're being used for. So there has to be accountability and transparency. One of the things that I'm calling for is that the city council should be obligated to give a full account of those tax dollars, those TIF dollars, on an annual, on a quarterly basis, and every alderman should give an account of those TIF dollars in those TIF districts on a quarterly basis. Thank you. You want me to repeat the can No, that's question? okay. I understand. Uh, Juan, we said Aldermanic candidate. Uh, respect to TIFs. I think the first thing that should be known is that the original reason that TIFs were created were to redevelop blighted areas. And unfortunately, there's been a lot of TIF districts created throughout the city of Chicago where that wasn't the case. They created them in neighborhoods where they were, they were well off. So the first thing I would like to do is terminate those TIFs those TIF where they're not needed uh, because all they're doing is stealing money from the taxing bodies. As you said earlier, when you create a TIF, what you're doing is essentially is you're freezing the tax, you're freezing the money going to the taxing bodies for a 20 year period and you're stealing money from all the taxing bodies, more specifically uh, CPS because you know, it's about 58% you know, of all the taxing bodies. And also I want to propose a mor moratorium on all, all expansions and extensions on all TIF districts. Thank you. Susan Sladowski. Susan Sladowski Garza. According to the Chicago, City of Chicago website, the definition of a TIF fund is to help local companies expand and create employment opportunities for Chicago residents. It's not working. The mayor implemented a TIF reform in 2011. It's never been touched. It's never been utilized. I intend to do, to expand small businesses and for Chicago residents, which will bring employment to the 10th Ward. We deserve the right to say how and where our tax money is spent. We will decide together as constituents where our TIF money goes. Not one person in office, you, you're a resource to me. I want to do that together with my ward. I want to say this is what we need, this is what we want, and this is where we're going to put it. Not just me, all of us together. Uh, 
I do not believe that an economic development is accomplished by handing over public funds to would-be saviors in the form of, of billionaire corporations who are all about profit and who disregard our communities. Lakeside is a, ex a great example. Despite receiving over $108 million in TIF funds, they refuse to even come to the table to discuss a community benefits agreement. And I think this is an issue that sets me apart from the other candidates who are running because I don't think that a single dollar should be spent uh, anymore unless a, and a single brick should be laid in the Lakeside Development until they sign a binding agreement to provide permanent well-paying skill, tra skill training and jobs to those who actually live and are impacted in the neighborhoods, particularly the Bush and South Shore and South Chicago. So I am calling for a moratorium now on TIFs until it is uh, uh, regulated in a way that's actually gonna benefit us. Olga Bautista. Okay, and the next panelist who will ask questions, that would be Benel Terry. Did I pronounce your name right? No, that's Rosita Chitanda. We're going the opposite. Okay. 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 Uh, progressive tax, a pro progressive income tax, uh, is the subject of we this can't next hear you. question. We, we can't progressive hear you. income tax is the subject of this question. Illinois residents pay a flat percentage of their state taxes as income tax. Wealthy individuals pay the same percentage of their income tax to the state as poor, as the poor. Unions, community organizations, and advocates have supported a progressive income tax where rich, the rich would pay a higher rate of taxes than those earning minimum wage. Do you support a progressive state income tax. How could additional revenue and tax fairness benefit your ward? Rich Martinez, 10th Ward. To answer your question, yes, I support the progressive income tax. The southeast side of the 10th Ward is a middle class community, a lot of blue collar workers. Uh, we even need to look and find ways, identify ways to reduce the tax burden as much as possible on our, on our current residents in the ward, uh, both from, a, from a, 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 a tax base and also from a property tax uh, base as well. And I support the progressive income tax because I believe that those who have been blessed with wealth, they should be, they should be taxed at a higher rate so that those uh, resources can then go back into the government bodies and be able to uh, invest in and create development and economic development opportunities in our ward and in our city. Thank you. I support, I, I don't support raising taxes for working people. I think um, regressive taxes that primarily burdens poor and working class families um, are a problem. And instead, I think the state needs to close all corporate tax loopholes, raise corporate tax rates, and otherwise shift the burden to those who are most able to afford it. To the second one. Juan Wiesad. So currently the city is facing a $29 billion deficit. The reason I bring that up with respect to taxes is because it's, we know we're, we're going to have to impose taxes. It, it's inevitable. The, the budget deficit is way too big at 29, at 29 billion. But I think first and foremost, before we start imposing taxes, I think we need to prove to the rest of the city of Chicago that we need to clean house. There has been so much fraud and so much waste throughout the city, so you need to start right there. So in order to start there, what I suggest is that I think you should, 
one, start with uh, abolishing the legislative uh, inspector general, because currently you already have the city inspector general. When they created the legislative inspector general, it was a waste of taxpayer money. They, he had no authority to, to do anything. So on the contrary, I think you should give full elevated authority to the city inspector general, let him do his job effectively, and get rid of the office of the legislative IG where you have himself and six people underneath him. So start with the fraud, cut the waste before you start imposing taxes on the people. Uh, the third candidate is Susan Sad Sadowski Garza. Brothers and sisters, ask yourself, why does a guy making $500,000 pay less taxes than me? That's not fair. I have marched in the streets with some of the brothers and sisters from SEIU that sit in this room right now on Bank of America to impose the LaSalle Street tax to have them pay taxes on every trade that's made in the mercantile exchange and the options exchange. That tax could generate between 10 and $12 billion a year. That could fully fund our schools, help the pension crisis, and put money back into the pockets of the working class families that deserve it. We need to rise up and say enough. We shouldn't be paying less more taxes than the guy that's down at LaSalle Street Let's impose this, I stand for graduated income tax, and I also stand to impose this LaSalle Street tax. All right, so we're gonna go back to the panelists, and which one is going to be? And please state your name. Ramel Terry. So this um, is actually a question that goes along the lines of what Canada uh, Garza touched upon. So financial transaction tax. The Chicago Inspector General estimated that a penny tax on financial transactions at the Chicago Board of Trade would generate over $37 million annually and would serve to limit speculative, tr speculative trading that in part led to the recent Great Recession. Do you support a financial transactions tax on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and the Chicago Board of Trade? Candidate. Like I said before, we need to make the rich start paying their fair share. They keep, people keep trying to balance the budget on the backs of the working class families. Our schools are not fully funded. We're dis Chicago Public Schools is District 299. Why are kids in Lakeview getting more money and why does every kid have an iPad and the kids in South Chicago and in the east side and in the 10th ward have nothing. We are District 299. Every single one of us should have be funded the same. We need to impose the rich need to pay the taxes. Again, not balance the budget on the backs of the working class families that are doing everything possible to try to make ends meet. I struggle more now at 55 years old than I ever have in my whole life. Are you with me? We can't have that anymore. We need to make people start paying their fair share. Olga Bautista. Would you like to question again? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm waiting for the moderator. Is that okay? I'm sorry. I think they've all gone or or did Rich go? I mean, I don't mind going, it's okay. <laughs> Look, I think that uh, all the candidates here support a LaSalle Street tax. I think that because of my community organizing experience, I'm a doer, I'm not just a talker, and I think that the way that we're gonna get this tax uh, passed is by doing some serious grassroots organizing to get people up to speed on what is a LaSalle Street street tax because if you go to Commercial Avenue and you pull somebody off the street and ask them what the LaSalle Street tax, they're not going to know what that is. So I think before we start and move it forward, before we move forward, we need to develop literature, get together and go out into the community and put the pressure on our elected officials so that they know that this is what the constituents of the 10th Ward and of South Chicago want for their community. So I think it's going to take a grassroots approach a community organizing approach, and I'm the candidate that can do that. I've done it, and I will do it. Thank you very much. Back to the panelists. 
Oh, you didn't answer? Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you, Rich Martinez. I'm a husband and father of five children. I support a family of nine on one income. I understand the tough checkbook decisions that we have to make as families on the southeast side. And I also understand the impact of taxes and fees that have negatively impacted our families. So as Alderman of the 10th Ward, I will support the LaSalle Street tax in the City Council. But in addition to that, I will also lobby our state uh, elected officials to ensure that we get this progressive state income tax for the wealthy. Thank you. Okay, uh, Juan Wiesad. Okay, so a lot of these issues seem to intertwine. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because, again, like I said earlier, um, taxes are going to be inevitable. But if you are going to impose taxes, you know, let's do it on something on a project like, you know, like the LaSalle tax. Reason being is because you cannot impose all these taxes on the working families that are already struggling, you know, to maintain their families. Lots of these families, you know, they have two jobs, sometimes three jobs. And when you're doing that, you're taking away time from these people being at home with their kids. And not only are you missing out on quality time, but these kids, they're missing out time with their parents. So these kids, they're out roaming the streets. You're losing the kids to the streets or getting into problems with violence. And that's, that's the reason I said that it intertwines, because these kids are going to end up being part of the problem with crime. So in a nutshell, yeah, if you're going to do it, you're going to impose the taxes, then start with the rich, not on the working families. Thank you. Okay, thank you, the panelists. And can you just state your name, please? Ray Bowman. In 2012, the Chicago Department of Public Health closed six mental health clinics and privatized 14 public health clinics. Do you support the reopening of these mental health clinics? Do you believe the Chicago Department of Public Health has an obligation to provide health services to the community? What should be the focus of the Chicago Department of Public Health? Can you hear me now? All right. Okay. Do, in 2012, the Chicago Department of Public Health closed six mental health clinics and privatized 14 public health clinics. Do you support the reopening of these mental health clinics? Do you believe the Chicago Department of Public Health has an obligation to provide health services to the community? What should be the focus of the Chicago Department of Public Health? Okay, now, according to my notes, it's the fourth candidate. Uh, Olga Bautista. Yeah, absolutely. I think the situation in the southeast side of Chicago, after the steel mills shut down and threw all the workers and the families out on the street to fend for themselves, created what I consider uh, a, a collective depression in the southeast side of Chicago, one that we are barely, try barely getting out of. And why, why I say that is because we actually have uh, candidates like myself who are running, who are going to sp speak up for ourselves and for, our, um, for, for what we need. And I think that mental health clinics are extremely important for our community where there is a rise in domestic violence, a rise in, in poverty, and we need to be able to deal with those situations, but also to organize and to work to, to uh, work to, so that we can change the status quo and uh, mental health clinics are extremely important and we need some in the southeast side of Chicago and I will be working very hard to bring those kind of services to the 10th ward. My name is Sue Sidlowski Garza. Uh, no one knows better than me about mental health clinics. I'm a counselor. Me, one counselor with 894 kids in my school. Sometimes it takes my students six months to get an appointment at a mental health facility. That's like suicide hotline, please hold. It's wrong what they've done. And John Pope has voted yes on Mayor Rahm Emanuel's budget, which closed those clinics. We need to work hard to get a trauma center on the south side. If you're hurt here, if you're hurt, you have to travel all the way to 95th to Little Company of Mary or to Northwestern Hospital. I will form a coalition of clergy and churches and unions and community organizations to lobby to get what we need in the 10th Ward. It goes right back to what I said in the beginning. We deserve better. Okay. 
Um, candidate number two. Juan Wiesar. Yes, I do believe you need to reopen the clinics. Uh, you cut half of those clinics in half. So if, if you're going to start cutting things, you don't cut them on services. Like I said, um, let's go back to the cutting, cutting fraud and cutting waste. You need to start there. That's where you need to make the cuts. Don't make the cuts on services needed by the people. And to ensure that, again, bringing it back to the IG, that's why you need to you know, give full abated you know, power to the IG so he can do his uh, job properly. He's going to make sure that the city council is being audited, not just the mayor, but also you know, all, of, all of city council. Thank you. Rich Martinez. Yes, to answer the question, I support the reopening of the mental health clinics because the services are sorely needed. It should be noted that the aldermen, there are several aldermen, including the aldermen of the 10th Ward that uh, voted to close these clinics. They should be held accountable in addition to the mayor. And these, the closing of these clinics puts an undue burden on the, on the not-for-profits in our community. The services still have to be provided and there are still people in need, so we have to do that. With regards to the Chicago Department of Public Health, I don't, do not believe that they should be monitoring environmental issues but because Mayor Emanuel and Alderman Pope voted to close the Department of Environment, now the Department of Public Health has to oversee environmental issues as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have uh, time, we have time for two questions. The first is, what can you do to help with the youth to have some uh, recreation after school to give the kids uh, something to do? And let's go with... Um, Candidate number four. He started last time. All right, candidate number one. Rich Martinez. Providing greater uh, resources and recreational opportunities for our children. Obviously, as an alderman, it's my job to work with the Chicago Park District to make sure that we bring the necessary resources to the southeast side and to the 10th Ward to make sure that our parks, for example, have the same types of programs and servicing that the parks on the north side have. That's what my job is as an alderman, to go out and to bring the resources from the city level, the county level, the state and the federal level back home to the 10th Ward where they belong. We pay taxes just like everyone else pays taxes across the city. There's no reason why Calumet Park should get the short end of the stick and Lincoln Park gets all the benefits. Thank you. I haven't, I, I've been doing this. For the past 15 years, I've been program director with the Hegwish Community Committee. I have serviced over 15, probably 1,000 children within the 10th Ward over my 20 years with CPS. I have brought over $370,000 in grant money for after-school programs and summer programs to the youth within the 10th Ward. Our youth have worked with the Joffrey Ballet, the Women's Sports Foundation, Go Girl Go!, Every single day of the week, our kids have something to do. Mentoring, crafts, sports, um, safe projects. I've taken them to Cincinnati, Washington, D.C., all at no cost to these children. They deserve to be, see what else is outside their 10th ward. We need to introduce them. We've, we, we've partnered with other schools to form a bully patrol in four different schools in the city. We've partnered to form a program called Safe Kids, where kids have a safe place to come, where there's a counselor always there that they can talk to. Thank you. Juan? Juan Wiesad. Currently, I am um, the East Side Little League president. I don't have any kids, but it's something that's very dear to me. I strongly believe that you need to invest as much as possible into our youth. Um, I don't think that our education is up to par here in the city of Chicago. Uh, and I'm going to give you one quick example. I have a friend whose kid is in, uh, they live in Orland Park. He dropped out of high school, but not because, you know, he was a dropout because he was a bad kid and his, his scores were bad. It's because he felt that he was prepared to take on the world, which he, which he did. I believe education is a solution to all your problems, whether it be crime, economic development, whatever the issue is. So you do need to invest into these kids as much as possible. Dump as much money into them. And not just into sports, but into crafts, dance, theater, 
sculpting, painting, anything, it, anything to do with the children, the, their future is in our hands. So you need to take responsibility for them right now. Thank you. Thank you. And Olga? This is such an important, important question about our youth. You know, a lot of my opponents talk about adding more police, and I say that we should add more jobs for our unemployed youth. I will address the roots of crime and putting public funds, by putting public funds into job training, recreation, and youth guidance. That's where the money should go, not to police departments that are already f fully funded. And also, I think that um, there are families in the, the southeast side of Chicago that have no heat, families with insufficient food to be healthy. If we don't meet the immediate human needs of our constituents, then we are not doing our job. And that's what the first order of business is going to be when I get into office. Okay, that was a notice about somebody getting their car towed. I hope you get there before the police do. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start our closing statements. So you get two minutes each. And we're going to start with uh, candidate four. Thank you very much. This was a very important debate for me because this is a, an issue that's very important to the community in the southeast side of Chicago and the issues uh, that the NAACP holds dear are issues that, um, that actually unite the black and brown community and that's what I'm, I intend to do as the alderman of the southeast side of the 10th ward because I think there's nothing more important than having an organized neighborhood, a, a neighborhood that can speak for themselves. We don't need anybody to speak for us. I'm a mother of a seven-year-old, I have a seven-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old baby, and I feel that I know exactly what's going to make our community better because I'm going through those issues. I'm living it. I'm active in my, my daughter's school. I'm active on the PECO campaign, and I know that by electing someone who is actually experiencing these kind of things, then we're going to be able to actually have the kind of solutions that are going to be able to impact real change. Because I don't want a better, just a better neighborhood. I want one that's completely and radically different. Juan Wiesad. So in closing remarks, I just want to give you my position on most of these issues. With crime and safety, I do believe we need more police officers, but more important than police officers, I think you need strategic placement of the officers, especially in the 10th Ward. In the 10th Ward, we are divided by bridges and trains, so sometimes the response times of police officers you know, aren't as fast as they should be. I think we need community policing. That means we need to get all our neighbors involved. Uh, I would like to see emergency posts, much like on college campuses, on all our bike trails and our paths. With respect to education, I support an elected school board, I would like to see special needs services in my ward. And as I stated earlier, youth programming to me is very, very big. With, these, with respect to economic development, like I said, that's my strong suit right there. I have 10 years in corporate America, so I know what it takes to revitalize a neighborhood. I know what tools are in my tool, toolbox to do so. And I know how to sell the 10th ward to the rest of Chicago. We have what, we, what I like to call the three R's. We have the rivers, the rails, and the roads all to utilize. And I. I have a zero tolerance for corporations that are willing to come into our neighborhood and sacrifice the health of our children. I don't mind businesses, I want them to come in here, but not at the expense of their health. And as far as uh, businesses hiring local, yeah, I would like to give them tax incentives to do so. But for the time being, until we get those businesses there, what I would like to do is bring a workforce development to prepare the people to obtain these jobs once these businesses come here. And last, with uh, Lakeside Development, uh, I support a community benefit agreement that it's going to allow us to not only build the lakeside development, but also live in it. And since I still have a few more seconds, I'm going to throw an inclusion. Um, I believe the communication between the aldermen and constituents needs to better. Uh, I believe in transparency, so I will hold town hall meetings anytime a new project comes in. You're not going to just wake up and see it one day. And I support participatory budgeting so we can, uh, our, we can choose how our tax dollars are going to be spent of our money menu, which is $1.3 million to the alderman. 
And for the elderly, um, I want to make sure that they are aware of all the services that the city has to provide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Garza. Again, my name is Susan Sidlowski Garza. Brothers and sisters, I, many of you I have walked in the streets and I have fought against the injustices against the working class families that we all are, right? When I'm in, elected as your alderman, I will implement participatory budgeting. When my budget comes out, I will include you in the process to, to say we will prioritize and we will say where our tax money is going to be spent and what we need to use it on. <laughs> Together we will prioritize and decide what needs to be done. This is already taking place in the 29th, the 45th, and the 40 sec 49th ward. I will vote no on any bill that threatens to cut cut a worker's pension. I will ensure that jobs that are brought to the 10th Ward are green and union run. I will continue to fight for an elected school board. And I want to form advisory committees using every constituent from every single part of this neighborhood, every single part of this ward, on education, crime and safety, youth, seniors, business and jobs. If it's one thing that I know, if you give the power to the people, the people will start to take pride in where they live. They start to get involved. They start to take the initiative to make this neighborhood a strong and vibrant place like it once was. We want a reward that's run by the people for the people. That's what true democracy is, brothers and sisters. Never doubt that a group of concerned citizens can change the world because guess what? Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Rich Martinez, let me first say that in the 10th Ward, unfortunately, we still struggle with issues of racism, prejudice and discrimination, racial profiling. My pledge and commitment here to you today is that under my administration, that will come to an end. We currently have an aldermanic office and staff. The alderman's former chief of staff was fired from the city for sexually harassing three African-American female city employees. In addition to that, there are no African-Americans currently on the alderman staff in the 10th Ward. That will change when I am elected. I will also utilize our TIF funds and brownfield tax credits to re remediate contaminated land, establish a green industrial economic corridor, implement an offshore wind farm pilot project at Lake Calumet, call for the development of a university and hos hospital compact complex to be the economic anchor of the lakeside redevelopment, ensure that the environmental justice principles of greater southeast Chicago are adopted, call for the establishment of a community benefits agreement not only on the lakeshore development but on every major project in the 10th Ward, call for the establishment of an international steel workers museum, and call for a complete ban on pet coke. I will also call for a moratorium on all public funding of charter schools. That $75 million that they're spending on charter schools will be invested into school programs in our local schools. Thank you very much. Our last question from the audience, do you support the construction of a new Petco facility or do you support a complete ban on Petco in Chicago? And let's start with candidate number two. Juan Wiesad. So the question was, do I support an all-out ban, correct? Okay, correct, I do. Um, so my, myself and uh, also with Rich uh, a few years ago, uh, we actually did stand up for uh, another project coming into the, the neighborhood, which is Lucadia, uh, which was also threatening the health of our constituents. And uh, here we are again facing another battle. Now we're facing pet coke. Uh, so do I support a full ban? I do. Um, like I said earlier today, I support any business wanting to operate. Um, we welcome them, but not at the expense of sacrificing the health of, of our children. It's, to me, it's just a price just way, way too high to, to pay. When, as walking down on the campaign show, knocking doors, you know, there's a lot of things that pop up in the, the mouths of people as far as what their issues are. Some of them mention safety, some of them mention education, but the hot topic right now is the pet coke because it's threatened the lives of all of our, all of our children. So, yes, I do support an all-out 
no, a band, four band on Pet Coke. Thank you. Candidate number four, Olga. So um, the question is, do we, so can you read the question again, please? Just want to make sure. Do you support the construction of a new Petco facility, or do you support a complete ban on Petco in Chicago? Yeah, I absolutely support a 100% ban on Petco. When we first started to organize around the Petco issue, this is and a lot of people here don't know what Petco is. It's a, a uh, it's the output of refining crude and petroleum that's coming from the BP refinery and stored openly in South Chicago. And what we need to do is completely remove this toxin from our facility, from our, I'm sorry, from that facility and from our neighborhood. It's a poison and it's causing us harm. And enclosing it is not, is not a solution. Building a warehouse is not a solution, and then diverting $50 million of our tax dollars to extend Burley so that this company can bring their poison in faster and more efficiently is not an option, and I will fight so that this stuff is not, is not just kicked out, but so that we set a high precedent so other moms across the country don't have to keep fighting this fight. The next one is uh, Richard Martinez. Rich Martinez, we have a proven track record in the 10th Ward of being able to fight against billionaire polluting industry. I helped lead that fight four years ago to stop the coal gasification plant from coming in to the 10th Ward in the southeast side. They want to build a $50 million road for this pet coke. BP is bringing a million tons, a million tons into the east side and the southeast side in the 10th Ward. They have a permit to bring up to 11 million tons annually into our community. We have a duty and an obligation to protect the health, the safety, and the welfare of the most vulnerable, our children and our senior citizens. I do not support the building of the warehouse. I support the complete and total ban of Pet Coke, and it's evidenced by the fact that we were able to get that referendum on the ballot and giving and empowering 10th Warders a voice and a vote and a say February 24th. Thank you very much. Garcia. Said loudly, Garza. I do support a complete ban on pet coke. Two years ago, I sat around the table with Olga and some people in this room, as a, just as a group of concerned citizens, saying we can't have this stuff here. Um, my my opponent Olga has done a wonderful job fighting the pet coke issue, um, and Pete, we have stood alongside her in that fight. The question is, if the aldermen truly cared about us, the pet coke wouldn't be there in the first place. The question was, uh, in, am I in favor of the facility? If they brought this, if you truly cared about us, the facility would have been built before the stuff was ever put there. It would have been built before the stuff was ever put there. And we, we sat in a meeting, Rich was there. Uh, it, it seems like this is a done deal, but our, we would continue to fight so our families don't have to breathe this stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, all the panelists. We don't, we can't take any more questions from the audience. Thank you for coming.